In this video, we're going to look at standard free energies of formation. Um, so the symbol for this is delta G naught, and it gets a little F at the bottom. Uh, so what this is, is by definition, this is the free energy change uh, that occurs oops, occurs when one mole of a substance is formed. Um, and th this is, again, has a couple of caveats. So this has to be um, at 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of pressure, one molar concentrations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So th this has to have all of the usual requirements for a standard, for standard conditions. And there's one other thing. Um, it has to be formed from the elements in the reference form. So what does that mean? So elements in, the ref in their reference form. That means that basically you take an element as it would be at 25 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. So like oxygen would be oxygen gas. Um, bromine would be bromine liquid. Um, iron would be iron solid. So they have to be formed from the pure elements um, at, uh, at one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. These are all tabulated in table 18.2, so you can find these values. And you'll notice that the delta G naught F for pure elements is equal to zero. So um, basically, we have the same idea with Hess's law. If we're starting from the pure elements in their reference form, and we have a, t a change which is at zero, and we have a change in delta G, then this is the this is the compound that we're making, and we're looking for the del the delta G of formation. That del that change in delta G is going to be the delta G of formation for that product, meaning that that's going to tell us where it is from zero, just like with delta H. We, we drew that same exact graph for delta H um, back when we did chapter six. And just like with delta H, we can say that delta G of a reaction is going to equal the sum of the number of moles times the delta G of formation of the products minus the sum of the number of moles times the delta G of formation for the reactants. So now we have two equations. So this is one equation that we can use, and we're going to look at an example problem in just a second of this equation. So we can go up and look in the table, uh, table 18.2, for th these values. So we get these values from table 18.2. And we can calculate the delta G for the reaction. The other way that we can calculate the del delta G for the reaction is to figure out delta H and delta S and for the reaction using the values in, in tables and get it from delta H minus T delta S. So we have two options now for getting delta G of reaction. You should keep track of this because these can be very, very helpful when you start to get more complex problems down the road. You may need to use these delta Gs to do something like figure out an equilibrium constant. So keep in mind these two equations. Delta G is equal to the sum of the Gibbs free energy of the products minus the sum of the Gibbs free energy of the reactants, and that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So now let's look at that problem. So in this lecture problem, we're going to use that the equation that we just derived to do some calculations to get delta G. So this one says the delta G for the following reaction, uh, calculate the delta G for the following reaction at 25 degrees Celsius. Determine if the reactions are spontaneous, non-spontaneous, or if they will form an equilibrium mixture. Use table 18.2 for the values of delta G. So we're going to do one. Um, uh, the other one I think you guys can try at home. So we'll do, we'll do uh, the first one, A, and then you guys can try B at home. Um, and... Obviously, we don't have table 18.2 in front of us immediately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and reference those values for you, and then we'll start to just plug them into the equation. So if you look up the value for ethanol, at li for liquid ethanol, um, you get minus 174.9 kilojoules per mole. And again, these values that I'm reporting here 
are the delta G of formation from table 18.2. So that's where I'm getting those from. Oxygen, we don't have to look up. We know that that's going to be zero kilojoules per mole. Remember that the delta G for a, um, an element in its reference state is zero. So we don't have to look that up. Same thing as with delta H. And then for carbon dioxide, we look that up. That's minus 394.4 kilojoules per mole. And water is minus 228.6 kilojoules per mole. Okay. So now that we looked up the values, we're going to use our equation, delta G, of the reaction is equal to the sum of the number of moles times the delta G uh, not a formation for the products minus the sum times the number of moles times delta G not a formation for the reactants. So our delta G for the reaction in this case is going to equal, again, I like to use a bracket, and then I start looking things up. So we're going to have 2 times minus 394.4 kilojoules per mole. That's for our carbon dioxide. Um, times plus 3 times minus 228.6 kilojoules per mole. That's for our water. Close bracket, and then we're going to subtract. And I'm going to just carry this down to the next line here so that we have a little bit a little bit more space. Actually, I don't even need it because we only have one number. So, And then we're going to just subtract the minus 174.9 kilojoules per mole, which is for the ethanol. And um, we're going to get our delta G of reaction. So our delta G naught of reaction is going to equal um, minus 129.7 9 kilojoules per mole. Um, so in this case, the final answer is that this is going to be spontaneous. It's going to be very spontaneous because we have the negative there at the beginning. So this is going to lead to a equilibrium mixture that's going to be almost entirely products, meaning um, we wouldn't even think of this as an equilibrium because this thing is going to be almost 100%. It'll be 99.99999% um, products. So this shows that this video plus the last video shows you two ways of getting uh, delta G of a reaction. One is from uh, the delta H minus T delta S, and this one is from the, the Gibbs free energies 